What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm super excited for this episode. The motor's back in the car. The car is running. I am driving it right now, breaking it in. And I can't wait to show you guys this video and share with you everything that I had to go through in order to get this thing up and running. Um, so far, it's running really, really good. I think I got a couple hundred miles on it so far. Um, just finding little things here and there, little oil leaks, little cooling leaks, stuff like that. So we're getting things really worked out, but it's driving good. It's building some boost. Um, so yeah, we're really excited. Um, I'm gonna take it easy the first 500 miles um, just to get the mileage on the car, get the rings broken in, but I feel it. It feels good and I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. So thank you guys for joining the channel again. Like, subscribe. If you've left comments in the past, I respond to all of them. You guys got questions, I got answers. So just let me know and uh, yeah, here we go. All right, so as you guys see, the car started and it is out of the garage, finally. Um, drove it a little bit today, so I wanted to kind of go over some of the things that, some of the issues that I had, and um, there was so much footage that I had of me just working on things because I was trying to first start it. Um, upon first start, the car would not start. I kept getting transmission malfunction. This is my fault. My silly ass decided to powder coat everything I could, including the transmission mounts. And obviously one of the main grounds for the transmission is through the mount because it is bolted to the back of the transmission that goes to the transmission that bolts to the frame. So I had to clean off an area of the powder coat and actually, uh, fix my ground issue. So that was one of the reasons why I kept getting a transmission malfunction. Um, so got that fixed. And then the next thing was, is I was priming the engine per the BMW instructions with taking the coils off and taking the injector plugs off and still was not getting oil pressure. Um, I only primed it for probably a total of two minutes in 10 to 15 second increments um, before I realized this isn't working, um, something's wrong. Um, I didn't have an oil prime tank at the time. And so uh, in the back of my mind, my main concern was my oil pump uh, gear that goes onto the crankshaft. Um, with a new Vargas turbo um, crank hub, <laughs> that thing was a beast to get on. And I felt that there was no way that it was loose or that there was something keeping it. There is a friction washer that goes on there. And so that tells me that this is mostly controlled by friction um, and that that's what keeps it tight. So there was things in the back of my mind thinking maybe the splines going into the crankshaft. I didn't get enough torque. Um, the torque on it was 270 newton meters plus 360 degrees. Um, I really wish I could have filmed that. I had, I don't know where it is. I had an eight foot bar out with my three quarter inch torque wrench and uh, I was pretty much hanging and jumping on that. I'm 200 pounds and um, I feel like I'm pretty strong and I was very much struggling to get this torque uh, spec perfect. 
So um, that thing was in the back of my mind. So uh, I decided at that point I needed to remove the whole front end of the car again and remove the cover. I did that and I took some video footage of the synchronization of the crank rotating with the vacuum pump gear, which goes around the actual oil pump gear. So I was able to verify that it was spinning. Okay, go ahead. And so um, once I was able to verify that, I put an oil pressure tank system on there, a prime system. Still wasn't getting oil pressure, and so I finally just hit the fuck it button and started the car, and we had oil pressure within one second of firing up the car for the very, very first time. All right, stop, stop. We got oil pressure. Thank the fucking Lord. Um, so was really happy about that. Once I got that all figured out and got my conscience clear of that and we got it all started, um, it was a matter of just putting the whole front of the car back together. So we got the car back together and got it running really well. I did about 15 to 20 minutes of some RPM, uh, higher RPM idles. So I started the car and then took it up to 2000 RPM, ran it up there for a couple of minutes, then took it up to 2500 RPM, ran it there for another couple minutes. Then I took it to 3000 RPM, ran it there for another three to five or three to four minutes, and then brought it back down. And so I did that for about a total of 10 to 12 minutes and then um, after we did that, I changed the oil. Um, and yeah, so we changed the oil and I took a little video here of what you'll see on the oil filter. So for the most part, it just seems like a lot of like light debris, no copper, no anything like that. Mostly just stuff from um, probably cleaning up when I cleaned up the head and you know, it's mostly uh, light aluminum uh, stuff, so no copper, no anything crazy, some black stuff. So um, I think we're pretty good. So yeah, oil filter had some light debris in it, but just normal stuff. Um, obviously my garage is not a clean room, um, so it's not perfect. You're gonna get some debris. I was working on the head, cleaning up the head. Um, I did some painting. I ended up painting the block. Um, I used that uh, brush on paint, uh, the, what is it? Uh, I forget what it's called, something 15. It looked like crap. I did not like it at all. So I ended up stripping the whole engine again, which was such a pain in the ass. Um, so yeah, that created a huge mess and I'm sure I got that kind of stuff in all sorts of places with the aircraft remover because I still had ports on the front of the engine open. Um, so. Finally got that all stripped and repainted the way I initially wanted to paint it and wish I would have painted it and how I've painted so many engines, but everybody was telling me how great this stuff is. And once I put it on, it just, I did not like the high gloss finish. I didn't like how it laid. I didn't like any of it. So I uh, ended up stripping the whole engine and redoing that. Now, some of the things that I've changed from the stock configuration, um, I put two external oil coolers and I eliminated one of the coolant system coolers that's on the passenger side 
front of the 535. It's like an extension of a radiator, so it's just a smaller radiator. I took that out. I took the transmission heat exchanger out as well, which is underneath your uh, intake manifold and your ECU right there. Um, so I freed up a lot of that space and I went with two external oil coolers. Um, I did the driver's side for the um, transmission and then I did the passenger side for the engine oil. So hopefully those will keep the oil temperatures really, really good. I did order some oil thermostats, um, one for 185 degrees for the transmission and one for 205 degrees for the engine. And um, I haven't put those in yet because we're about to hit summertime and I don't think I'm gonna have a whole lot of issues uh, warming up my engine and transmission oil in the summer here in Arizona. So um, we're gonna run it without the transmission and engine oil thermostats and then just see how we do and see what my temperatures are. Another change I had to make was to my pure turbo inlet. Um, the factory inlet is like an inch and three quarters. The aftermarket one was like two and a quarter. The new Pure 750 is a three inch inlet. Um, on the F10 chassis, you don't have a lot of room. Um, you have your uh, thermostat housing there. You have your water pump there. You have a bunch of coolant lines, lines going to the turbo. So you run out of a lot of room that's coming up from that area. And to have a three inch inlet, it was a little bit difficult, but I was able to, uh, with the new billet inlet, I was able to put a silicone um, union, and then we put a three inch uh, 90 degree elbow, but I couldn't use a mandrel bend. It had to be a specific type of bend. Um, and then I welded a leg onto that that went to another silicone 90 that went to a straight to the what I'm calling the in-house performance front house front mount intake um, for the Pure 750. But I will be still doing one for the stock configuration. I am working on that. I got a lot of stuff going on. So please hang tight. I'll have those soon and then I'll have them for sale soon once I get dyno runs on the stock car and then with the intake with more data. So yeah, that's just covering some of the things that I did um, during the build. I do have a build list that I can share with you guys. Um, I guess I can go over that real quick. So um, if you haven't seen some of the parts, um, I went with manly pistons and connecting rods. Um, they were readily available. Um, and I got the pistons that were over half a millimeter. So I did have my, my engine machined um, and uh, over half a millimeter. And then, so yeah, I went with their pistons, the manly pistons and the manly rods. And then I went with King and Excel bearings um, for my connecting and my main. Um, stock crankshaft still, so that's still there. Um, and then, like I said, I went with the Vargas Turbo Crank Hub. Um, and there's a lot of accessories. I did the Vargas Turbo Oil Thermostat Delete. Um, I added two oil coolers. Um, we have the evolution of speed intake manifold. So I have a lot of other things obviously that were a part of the whole engine. Um, but for the most part, that was the main thing was getting the forged rods and pistons in the car to handle the pure 750. Um, so we hopefully don't have any issues with the, the power range that we're looking for this turbo to produce. Um, so far with the 750, they're claiming 650 plus. I'm hoping for 700. Um, that's my goal. Um, so, and then with that, we have the Dorsch Engineering. I went with their M55 lift kit and then also went with, I already had their stage two, but because I had the first version of their stage two, I had to send it back to get um, upfitted, I guess, for their stage two five serial number. So it's the newer version or revision of their stage two um, high pressure fuel pump. Um, with the lift kit, since our, our fuel pumps are mechanical, it is operated by a cam lobe within the fuel pump or the vacuum pump assembly. Um, that lobe is increased to 39% uh, more flow on top of the stage two. So hopefully with that and the S63 injectors that I installed, um, we're supposedly going to be good to 800 wheel horsepower with E85. Um, I don't think we'll be making that number with this turbo, 
but that is what my fuel system is rated for right now, which is awesome. So um, in the future, if I do want to go bigger, um, I have the fuel system that can handle it. So really want to give a big up to the guys at Dorsch Engineering for hooking me up and getting everything I need to get this, uh, this uh, engine built and set up and ready to put down some power numbers. And then finally, we got Jack's Transmissions. Jack's Transmissions did me a solid and they built me a Drag 750 setup um, with the Billet E-Hub. So um, we got that in the car and uh, got the oil in it. And so we will see how it does. Um, awesome part with the warranty and everything. And they were in Colorado, so the shipping was a lot cheaper freight. So um, they got it back to me in a pretty timely manner, even though they had to order some um, parts from Europe because my transmission is, I think it's a 52 spline and they go to a 63 spline. So um, they had to order some parts, but they got that all taken care of and got it back to me um, with oil and the instructions and stuff like that. So really want to thank those guys as well for getting me the transmission. Um, a very reasonable price um, for this chassis and platform. I know a lot of guys don't want to spend six grand on a stage one with pure driveline solutions. I know they're a great company and they put out an awesome product and it's a race product, but not a lot of guys are trying to race, you know, an F10 big body. I mean, like nobody wants to race a boat. Um, straight line stuff, great. Drag racing stuff, great. But um, if you're planning on making 800 um, or more with the N55 and an F10, uh, you're doing something far past what I'm doing and I wish you luck. So um, yeah, great to have their transmission in there. I think the total was like 3,500 bucks. Um, so somewhere close to that $3,600. So yeah, definitely check them out and uh, look for them for the, your transmission needs for the eight HP 45s. Well, we just finished welding up the exhaust. Sounds amazing as you can hear. Um, we did a full stainless TIG welded exhaust. So super excited to see what comes after this break-in. I'll definitely keep you guys up to date. And uh, we'll see what this thing does soon. So uh, thanks everyone for joining the channel and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.